So what's the history behind the Egyptian Museum? Uh, the Egyptian Museum, this, uh, which was uh, established by Auguste Mariette, he was a French man. Yeah. He would like, because you know that we have a big civilization, a big history, so uh, he would like to make something like a big house to collect all the treasure of the kings and the queens. You know that we have a big civilization, so our history was divided into 30 dynasties. Began from the King Menes, 3300 BC, and ended by Alexander the Great, 332 BC. So all this history, all this civilization, we have a big treasure. So they would like to make, as I told you, a big house to collect all the treasure of the kings and queens. Yeah. So this museum collect more than 120,000 pieces inside. I think now they moved many pieces from over there, especially from the uh, part of the King of Tutankhamun. They move it now to the New Egyptian Museum. Yeah, the but one which is on construction. Have, excuse me? The one which is on construction that way. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, they moved many pieces over there because they would like also to make a big, a big uh, session for the King Tutankhamun. Because inside the museum here, we have to uh, floors. The second floor we have a special collection for the king Tutankhamun. Tutankhamun, from my view, that he didn't need to do anything for our Egyptian history. But why all the fame for this king? The king Tutankhamun, one of the most famous kings all over the world. That's why all this dates back to his treasure. Because he was a lucky king. Uh, because we discovered the tomb of the king Tutankhamun completely. At, uh, in, at the valley of the kings at Luxor. This, uh, that's why, because it was protected by another tomb of, for the king Ramses number six. So, uh, in 1922, there is Englishman Howard Carter. He discovered the tomb of the king Tutankhamun. That's why the king Tutankhamun, one of the most famous kings all over the world. So he has a special collection in the Egyptian museum. Okay. We will see one of the most important things, the golden mask, which had a weight about 110 kilograms gold pure. We will see also the coffins of the king. So when we arrived over there, I would like to give you an introduction about our history. Uh, I will show you different things from different periods of Egypt, from the old kingdom, the middle kingdom, the new kingdom. and. Uh, I will select for you the most important pieces. That's why, because as I told you inside the museum, more than 120,000 pieces. So if you want to see everything, you will stay here at least three or four months to see everything. You have enough time? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. If you have enough time, no problem. We can stay here. No problem. <laughs> This is a building of the museum, has a design, a Greek Roman design. You can see from the two parts, two statues for the goddess Isis, the goddess of love and the beauty. In the middle here, you can see the goddess Hathor. As I told you, this special design, like the Greek Roman design. The museum from inside contains two floors, uh, divided into different sessions, like as I told you, from the old kingdom, middle kingdom, new kingdom. More than 120,000 pieces inside. In the second floor, we have a special collection for the King Tutankhamun. You can see in the middle here this vase, which contains two plants very important in the middle, which is called the papyrus plant papyrus and the lotus. Flower. Flower. The, this refer Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt because prehistory was uh, Egypt was divided into two parts of Egypt, Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. So this refer for Upper Egypt and Lower Egypt. From the papyrus plant, they make the first paper all over the world out of the stem of the plant. You have seen this? Yes. How they make the paper? Yes. And from the lotus flower, they get the essence of the perfume. As I told you, this without alcohol. Yes. This pure, essence pure. Uh, you can see two statues for sphinx and strength. In Egypt, we have about 99 statues of sphinx. This 
tools that's for Sphinx, which belongs to the king Totmus the third. Okay? You have seen the biggest one at yeah, Giza area, at Giza. the second huge one at Memphis. Okay? Uh, now take your photos because after that we will go inside and exit from the other side. Okay. You will use just this. Hello guys, right now we're in front of the Egyptian Great Museum. As you can see, this museum is practically uh, 100 years old because of from what the our tour guide is telling me. It was established in the early 1900. So guys, we'll be going in there to see what this place has to propose for us and I hope you get satisfied by what I'm going to show you because I'll try my best to film what I can because uh, you know this is, uh, this is not my country and I don't know how the rules are and I have to be very, very... I have to take all my precautions to make sure I don't get stuck somewhere or the, uh, my graduate won't get seized or something like that because I don't know what is supposed to be filmed and what is not supposed to be filmed. So guys, let me know which your time and we'll be going in there together. Don't go anywhere because I have there's something in there. There are a lot of precious things in there and I really want to bring what I can for you. So guys, TDS, TDS, don't go anywhere. I will bring you everything you need to see. I need you to travel with me because I'm just telling a story and you are watching the story. Maybe you'll travel some other day to bring you out to me too. Thank you. security control so without the amount of pieces but I will select for you the most important pieces here here we have, we have this which is called Rosetta Stone from the Rosetta Stone we discover the letters in hieroglyphic alphabet that's why because they have discovered this stone at Rashid okay so when they try to do this you can see that what was written in three tickets when they translate the tickets here they discovered that the, the same uh, meaning but just have uh, uh, three written together here we can see this the demotic uh, letters in bureautic letters when they do translation in that time they know the two writing. When they do comparison between the three letters, they discover the hieroglyphic alphabet. This I told you is called the stone, this replica one, not the original, because the original one is the British Museum in London. This which was uh, discovered by Champignon, this man. Giza, the third pyramid. I show you the long crown, which is symbol of Lower Egypt. This here is the King Oster Cap, which is back to the fifth dynasty, and here wearing the red crown. This one, which is symbol of Upper Egypt. Okay. Here, one of the most important pieces for the King Zosar. Do you know Zosar? No. Zosar is the owner of the first pyramid all over the world, which we call this the Step Pyramid. This is back to the 3rd dynasty, 2780 BC, and he ruled Egypt about 19 years. As I told you, he is the owner of the first pyramid all over the world. We have discovered this, uh, this statue in a small room behind his pyramid, which is called Serdeb. This is made out of white limestone. You can notice the false beard as the false hair of the king which means it's a real king, symbol of real kings for the kings and the queens, the false beard and the false hair here. So, this here. This is here sarcophag. We have different shapes and development for the sarcophagus. This is made out of alabaster. Before I show you this one, I have to give you an introduction or an idea about the mummification process. Do you know something about the mummification? 
Oh. The mummification process is one of the most important operation for the ancient Egyptian people. That's why we call this something to keep the body preserved for the eternal life. Because as I told you, they believe in the second life. So they would like to preserve everything. Preserve the soul inside the pyramidal shape, preserve the body by the mummification process, preserve their names inside the cartouches. So how they do the mummification process? You know, after the death of the person, they take the person to the temple of the mummification. They do washing for the body from outside, and after that they make a hole in the head to take off the brain. After that they make a hole in the left side of the body to take off all the organs. Put these organs inside jars, we call it the canopic jars. This is special jars to keep the organs preserved inside. So you can see this jar here. So this, as I told you, is called canopic jars to keep the, the organs preserved, to keep the other life for the organs inside. Yes. But they leave just only the heart inside the body. Do you know why? No. Because the heart is something very important for the final judgment. That's why, because after the death, they have to judge <coughs> the, the people. So there is balance in the, in the two scales of the balance. One scale they put the heart, the other scale they put the feather of justice, which refers to the God smack the God of justice. If the heart is heavier, means that he is a bad person. So they accompany him to animal. This horrible animal makes it between crocodile and lion to swallow the heart. But if the feather is heavier, means that he is a good person, so they come home to the paradise. So, did you? Oh, excuse me. As I told you, they leave the heart. Do washing for the body from inside. Drown the body by different material like salt, natural oil, and put a special material inside the body. Wrap it the body. Put the body inside the coffin, and they put the coffin inside the big sarcophagus, as this one and this one. And I will show different shapes of the sarcophagus. Okay. This operation takes about 70 days, and after that, you do ceremony for to bury the body. Okay? This here is called the Mary of the Village. That's why, or also has another name in hieroglyphic, <coughs> which means Ka Iber statue. Why? Because the Mary of the Village, because in that time when they have discovered this statue, has the same shape like the Mary of the Village in Zanzibar. This represents good sculpture, that's why, because as I told you, made out of sycamore wood. You can see all the body and just the two hands. Look at this. You can look at the eyes, which is intercial, by green crystal. Green crystal, when you look at the statue, as if you look at the statue. Yes. Is Deriva, is Adma, Adma, Bo, Blokava, Deriva. No, Roki, Roki, is Dilama, Adelna, Ibatum, Briklipuna, Briklipuna, Kista. This here, like a false doors. That's why, because you know, there's something for more protection for the pharaonic people or the, for the pharaohs that they do false doors like this instead of the main doors for the tombs this to protect their tombs when any thieves would like to reach to this tomb they, can, they have they discover the false doors like this okay, okay. you have seen the great pyramid okay now i will show you the statue of the king of Yops, the owner of the Which means the powerful and the energy. 
Down here you can see the cartouche. Yeah, you can see the name. The name of the king. From this side comes with me to see something very important. This here you can see the lotus flower and the papyrus plant, which is mean the unification between the two parts of Egypt. We have something very important here. You can see at the back the falcon. Okay. The falcon. Is, uh, the, the protection for the king. Because the falcon which referred for the god Horus, the god of protection. So when we see the falcon like this, means that he follows the king all the time to protect him. From the other side, the same thing, the lotus flower and the papyrus plant. Oh, okay. That you hear in the museum of all Egypt, we have this one, the smallest one. This belongs to the king Cheops, the owner of the Great Pyramid. So we, how we can imagine that the owner of the Great Pyramid have just not only small statue like this. The height of this one, 7.5 centimeters, made out of ivory. When we have discovered this statue, they discovered the body. After that, for three years, they do look after the head. They do cleaning the sand, and after that, they discover the head, do restoration for the body and the head of it. This for the statue for the head of Harris. We discovered the stuff, this one, inside of the house. And also another jar, they move it. The first one, who? The king of Menace, the owner of the first dynasty. Here we can see the king with the red crown, symbol of Upper Egypt. This position for the god Osiris, the god of, Ose the god of paradise. Uh, we can see the false beard has a curve like this. What is the meaning? We have to shape the beard. Straight shape, which means that this is a statue during the life of the king, has a curve means after the death of the king. And by the way, you can notice the big feet of the statue. We have to reason for that. One said that this represents the king, like a very strong king, so he can defeat the feet under his enemy, uh, the defeat the enemy under his feet. And some other said because maybe he has a disease of the elephant in his head. Okay. The elephant size. The elephant size, yeah. Yes. Okay. Hello guys, I hope you guys are falling over with me. I'm trying my best to come out with the best of videos I can. It's actually discreet to visit it in here, so we just take whatever thing I'm proposing for you. Again, he is the son of her husband, Thutmose the Third. About 23 years battles. After that, she becomes a queen of Egypt. When she becomes a queen, she will have to tell the people that she is strong like the men. She, so she, depicts herself like the man by the clothes, the headdress, the horse beard, everything. She had one of the most important temples here in Egypt, the temple of the Queen Hatshepsut. At Upper Egypt. The statues for the Sphinx look to the Queen Hatshepsut. Human face, but like lion, as I told you. Here she is something in her hands. Yes. One contains the lotus flower, the other contains the birth plant. Because these two sacred plants so make like offering for the god. Uh, this two pieces for the Queen Hatshepsut. Now we will go upstairs to see the collection of the King Tutankhamun. After I so guys, right now we are going up to see the collection of the King. That is one of the greatest King in Egypt uh, because he ruled Egypt from the age of nine. Uh, the they have discovered But this one was inside this one. So what inside the second one? No. No. Yes, this here was inside this one. These are all kinds of Okay, I stop it. It's okay. So we can see here also from the four corners 
the four sons of the god Horus, the god of protection, no. this is special to protect the organs of the king. Here you can see the two cartouches, which contain the name of the king, with the Kaman and his wife. Here the organs inside the jars, and covered by mask of the king of Sinka. Okay. How is it preserved? How does it preserved? <laughs> As I told you, I should explain the yeah. process, no, they, they I mean get the, the organs, organs, they put special materials to keep the organs preserved. For how long can that be? Uh, uh, many thousand years, as you see. Still fresh? For sure. No, dried, but still preserved. Okay. Because they put special material to dry the okay, organs. To remove the water? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. This lot, jackal like this, or human body with a jackal head. You can see that. The, the woman, uh, the king and the queen, we just was like in love position because she put her hand on his shoulder and you can see the sun, this, which is symbol of God, Amudra, the God of the sun, is dead, the peace and the eternal life and the happiness for them, okay? Yeah. Uh, we can see you now something very important that you can see, in their feet there is one sandal and one sandal, which means the ring of the engagement now. Two sandals means marriage. Come from the side. Here contains the name of the king of Tutankhamun inside the cartouche. From the other side, the same side but contains the name of the queen. And he is in Okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. We are supposed to have two statues here, but they move one to the new museum. This here, which represents to protect the Ka and the Ba. What is the meaning of Ka and Ba? Ka, which means the body, Ba, which means the soul of the king. It is special two statues for to protect the uh, body and the soul of the king inside the tomb. The other statue has the same design, like, but the difference just only the headdress. The headdress. Yes. Yeah. It has uh, black, black uh, color and the, uh, some kissing by gold legs. <laughs> this head for the king just can come. Just the A come, the A. So now here, this part, as I told you, collection for the King Tutankhamun, they moved many things, but now we go to see another tomb for two persons, like high priest in that time, it's called Yoya and Soya. We will see the sarcophagus, yes, the sarcophagus, we will see the mummies of these two persons, we will see the masks of them. that we have different shapes and development for the sarcophagus. These two shapes of the sarcophagus. The sarcophagus, as I told you, after the mummification, they wrap the body, put the body inside coffins like that over there, put the coffins inside the sarcophagus like this. Special for 
these two persons, Yoya and Soya. This jar also which contains the organs inside also. Close to your phone, you can see how, how it's preserved. You can see the fingers, even the hair is preserved. Everything preserved. So, these are real mummies. Real mummies, yes. Welcome once more. Uh, we just saw real life mummies. I mean, real life mummies. What you saw there were real life mummies. So, if you watch the movie, the mummies, you just saw one, the real one. Like, I mean, the feeling is strange. Like, even videotaping it, I had to ask, like, Am I supposed to? Because I don't want something to follow me after this. But guys, I hope you enjoy what I'm bringing to you. If the, I don't know, I don't know how the sound quality is going because when I go back to the house, I have to check. I don't know if her voice is uh, the tall guy's voice is clear enough. But I hope uh, whatever thing she's saying, you can hear because I don't think I'll be able to explain these things after because I can't explain what I'm not sure of. The only person that could do that was the lady, uh, the tall guy, and uh, I hope whatever thing she said. It's clear enough for you to understand because it's all about having the feeling I'm having right now. So guys, I won't waste most of the time. I will continue my tour around and I will be bringing more things for you guys. So stay put, don't move, okay? This is a bed. This you know that this bed, how they do fact factory this one. You know the green part of the papyrus museum, the papyrus yes. uh, land the green part is very strong part and flexible so they use it to make the bed like this it's more comfortable <laughs> hello guys welcome back as you can see i'm in the edition museum and uh, it has been a great tour so far i hope you appreciate the work i've brought to you everywhere along your artifacts uh, mummies god thousands of years of history i mean we're talking bc when they're talking they're talking bc they're not talking 10 years i mean it's history open for the public but uh he, he has some restrictions so guys i hope you enjoyed the work and the videos and uh, guys thank you if you have watched this video to the end i really appreciate your dedication to learning more i don't know if what i've brought is uh resourceful enough but i hope uh, you stick on to keep on watching my video so guys take care love you I really appreciate if you keep on staying here. I really appreciate. Thank you very much. Ciao.